it's awesome to be famous and successful, but all I gotta do is put my clothes on and I'm Joe Schmo again, no problem at all. Like, I'm just thirsting for something to happen that everybody's talking about me again. Tonight's top story, body camera video of the naked cowboy getting arrested at Bike Week. For me, he's the face of Mon Hey, get over here. It's the fabric of Times Square. A little crazy, a little muddy. Have you ever taken your picture with him? Or no. Interacted? I'm a New Yorker. To me, he's my hero. He's in his 50s. He doesn't age. He might be a Trump fan, allegedly. I'm not. Trump's gonna build a wall. That wall's gonna protect us all. Sounds like a good idea to me. The naked cowboy. The naked cowboy. Somebody says one negative thing about me, I'm struggling with it. I want everybody in the world to love me. Some people send me message, how can you be with the naked cowboy? He's a Trump supporter, and so what? <laughs> and he's my husband. Now how can a naked cowboy get skin cancer? Yeah. Yeah. Sunscreen's for p just so you know. I don't care how famous you are, you don't feel famous. I'm getting chills saying that, though. I guess I feel a little famous. My name is Robert Burke. I sing and play guitar in my underwear. And I go by the name Naked Cowboy. Roughly 1998, I was trying to be a model, an actor, or a country singer at that point. You know, basically, I want to be rich and famous. And I took the Greyhound bus to New York City, and I went to every single modeling agency in this town. Every single one said, these pictures are horrible, you suck, you're never going to make it as a model. And I just, I finally snapped and just went home. <laughs> New York. But it was years of doing that and sending out nude pictures to photographers and all of a sudden I got in Playgirl. So I went to shoot for Playgirl magazine. And while I was there, I went to Venice Beach and sang and played guitar in my clothes. And I was completely ignored. And a photographer said, why don't you play in your underwear and do something different? He called me Naked Cowboy, I thought it was genius. So I mean, how are you gonna get famous? I went out and got on TV every single day. I mean, I literally went state to state, city to city, went out on the street, called the police and the news on myself, waited 10 minutes, and then I would go to where this crazy guy's out here with this huge crowd. I'm just saying, it was an instant hit. I just happened to go to New York. I just happened to go into Times Square, and it was so busy, and people were taking pictures, you know, like MTV was filming there, and I got on MTV like the first day, and I heard the Howard Stern show. I went right over, and they just let me right in. Did that with Fox and Frank, you name it, all this shit. I did everything. A brand is nothing more than a replication of an image. Nobody's gonna beat me. For 21 years, I've been out here almost every single day. 22 years went by and just do the exact same thing every day. This Naked Cowboy dialogue is my personal development goals. The endless, hardest working promoter to the masses we call humanity, the vehicle, Naked Cowboy, the foundation, me, the spirit. Maintain absolute allegiance to staying outside of the reality that the rest of the world seems so foolishly inclined to accept. I always say Unlimited Power was the first book I ever read. He said, you can be anything you want, do anything you want. He just tells you, write out your physical goals, your financial goals, your social goals. I have a totally pimped out Escalade by November 31st. I have two national TV commercials airing by November 31st. I have two unlimited licensing deals for $1 million plus dollars with five-year contracts by November 31st. An institution is length and shadow of one man. Pages and pages and pages, every single one, mind-blowing. Wherever I am, a revolution is underway. The story I've told myself a million times, you live in your story, you know? This is me talking to me every day of my life. I make everything serve me, all things serve the master. This is my year of total ascension, the very fucking top. Billboards in Times Square, LA, Chicago, London, we need the deal. Get the deal, I got the deal, it's here. High rise apartments in New York City, major motion pictures, national TV commercials, iTunes. Dude, you gotta get serious now. You gotta believe it, man, the big shit. What you write, and what you do goes into your neurology. That helps to tap your head. When I read, I'm the most celebrated entertainer of all time, and I'm grumpy in the morning, I'm like, you know, I put on a smile, and I try to get into the mode. Well, I started off in New York City, playing a song or two. My whole thing was to be the most celebrated entertainer of all time, just like Babe Ruth. How many times you willing to go up the bat? Hello, how are you? It was just basically to entertain more people than anybody else ever did. Uh, what kind of dogs? Huskies. Ain't nothing but Pomeranian Huskies. I also have a world-renowned personality. The more you interact with people, the better you get at it. Hey, bro. Hey, cowboys and Indians. <laughs> yeah. What's up, guys? You get in, don't make me come and get you. Fine.
I'm the new couple, keeping the roof on. You get in, sweetie, don't be bashful. Oh, it's okay, it's happened before. Hey! Hey! Hey, what's up? We're on 45th and Broadway in we're, Times Square in New York City. We're smoking wieners. I see him all the time, every day, rain, shine, snow, sleet, hail. I ask him how he stays warm, but he won't tell me his secrets. So. <laughs> Easiest one of all, just coming up and squeezing that butt. I always said I want to be famous, realizing I should have said rich and famous. <laughs> that drive is always there, but you never get the reward. You know, once you have it, it goes away the next day. They're not going to talk about you unless something else comes up. Like, I'm just thirsting for something to happen that everybody's talking about me again. Come on in, buddy. Get your selfie. You saw it. No, no Daytona. Daytona. When I was in Daytona, I went down there, was performing. I go down every year, basically. I was just walking through the streets, and it's a very naked cowboy friendly crowd. Everybody's taking pictures, coming up, putting money in the guitar. So they have a new panhandling ordinance. Come here. Let's go in here. I, I saw the tape myself. I guess they came over and said, you know, you got to move along. You have your ID on you? I have it. Uh, you can go that way, man. Go that way. No, it's my wife. Right, go that way. No, no, not going anywhere. She's my wife. Here, when we walked by the first time, we told you to stop panhandling, and you're still accepting money from people. I'm like, I'm not panhandling. Then we're kind of arguing back and forth. So the blacks walk around and take tips all day long, Excuse but me? I don't want anything about that. I don't Excuse care. Me? You heard me. And then they eventually put me in the car. You need to be quiet. Move. You broke on my the guitar now. Get up against the car. You broke my guitar. They say I made a homophobic slur. I also apologized like 30 seconds later. Then I called her a bitch. And then I said I was sorry again. Don't give a about the money. Take it. Um, take it. Like I was just being pushed around and you know, I was like, I kept talking, I was like, I'm just under pressure. I'm just saying using foul language and being, you know, over the top is what I do. I'm just saying, you can act any way you want in the world. If you're a public figure, and you know, there's plenty of public figures who couldn't care less what anybody thinks about them. Don't pan down. If somebody says one negative thing about me, I'm struggling with it. I want everybody in the world to love me just because I like Trump. Half the world hated my guts. Don't be a chump. Support Trump. Get us out of this economic slump. Sounds, Sounds like, like a good idea, idea to me. Yeah. I personally find him just to be funny as can be, and people think he's horrible, racist, all this stuff. But I just don't see any of that. The the I went to the Black Lives Matter rallies with my Trump guitar. Some of them screaming and yelling, but almost in every instance, they didn't care. You are blood, thirsty, hungry ass, attention seeking cracker. No pictures of him. Fuck this guy. No pictures. Make a cowboy, put on a mask, and put on clothes. I liked also Trump because I want my own penthouse on the top of New York City. I want to get up every day, put on my big fur coat, walk down my own escalator, and come out and be the king of New York City. Yeah, boy. Got the hole I cut with a knife and just put so 20 and a 10, you know, to give my car. They see that the money hole's there, so without asking or saying anything, they have the option to check for boogers. I'd say I get more dollars than anything. And you see there's tons of fives, 20s. $150,000 a year I make in Times Square just on tips alone. Five, six, seven hundred dollars every day. Two hundred and whatever that is, about 50 bucks. I made no money during Corona. I get a tip from a photographer or something once in a while. Now the money's coming back. I can make a hundred bucks a day. I'd be fine. You know, making a couple hundred bucks is just awesome. You know, it's plenty. Of, all I do is work. I don't spend it on anything. Have this every single year of my life. Every single penny I've spent, not one thing I buy, they don't have the receipt. All money spent solely on my life's mission. There's no waste, there's nothing that's not consistent. I don't have a lot. I have my car, very few clothes. My wife is 100% supportive. We love each other, could care less. play your song too, I mean, I haven't played it in years because we're already married, why should I go out of my way? <laughs> the first time I saw him, it was on a book. 
I was in college and he was in a book and so I wanted to meet him. So when I saw him for the first time, I was so excited and we got a picture together and then we start talking. That was back on 2008. Some people send me message, how can you be with the naked cowboy? He's a Trump supporter. And so what? <laughs> He likes Trump, I don't care, he's my husband. You like Trump too. You're always talking about Trump, so I like him now. <laughs> he's a very good husband, always supporting me in everything I do and I want to do. My best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. I'm going to be in your room. He cries. Bring out the weapon. a movie, he cries. <laughs> Not every night. That was Rocky. It was Rocky, it was Adrian, I was stiff. He's always crying. <laughs> he's very emotional. <laughs> You didn't wait for me to. When was your last surgery? So strong, you weren't worried about nothing. I just thought since it was a matter of life and death and I was getting my chest cut off, you might want to come. But you didn't want to come, and that's fine. Well, I wouldn't say I had a health scare. I just thought I had a bump. So they did a biopsy, and they said it was something, something carcinoma, which is a cancer related to the sun damage. I'm going today, and I assume they're going to somehow gauge what or if there's anything below the surface, slice it, take some out. What's up, guys? If I walked over here as Robert Burke, nobody would be saying, hi, how you doing? Nobody would be cheering me up the whole way here. What's up, guys? How you doing? Great. Well, I'm the naked cowboy, keeping it free for you. Have a go. It's going to make their day fun by me being the naked cowboy. It's going to make the entire day interested. So it's awesome, you know? I mean, why wouldn't I? I come over as Robert Burke, I might as well be sitting in jail like a schmuck. Nobody knows, nobody cares. I'm not, I don't want that, you know? Hey, cowboy, let's see, how are you? All right. Famous man. What is your plan now? Going to Times Square, it's just, my whole goal today was to get this done and to still maintain my schedule. I mean, my whole, th whole life is about maintaining my schedule. And walking over there, it was just encouraging to have everybody be all kind, friendly, whatever. I like this car, actually. I think it looks cool where it is. It really does. It looks pretty cool. Back to the office. Now, how can a naked cowboy get skin cancer? Yeah, hey, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. Sunscreens for <laughs> just so you know. Don't forget the back. Get a little squeeze, honey. Come on, take a little sauce. Went out there running around. They'll be like, hold it. I'm like 50. I only got 50 years left. I'm halfway there. Let me formally induce, let us endorse the new mayor. Let me endorse my new mayor. We will. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Trailblazer. Did anything be better than that? We don't stop. We keep moving. So to anybody thinking this is the end of the Naked Cowboy, it's just the beginning. And that's fine. If I end up with one leg and everything else is eaten off by cancer, I'm like, I'm the Naked Cowboy. Hook, not supposed to move around like that. I'm the happiest, healthiest, wealthiest, most beautiful man in the world. I'm the richest, most famous man in the world. I'm the most celebrated entertainer of all time. Wherever I am, a revolution is underway. Your actions are diverse of your soul. Your words are just the voice of your mouth. You can talk shit no matter what your situation is, Naked Cowboy. The world is his who's going to see through its pretension. Every day I convert an army of people into an army of fans. I define a fan as one who has witnessed the potential of man.